it's lesson number 11 here on Writing with Deb. It is so great to see you and it's great that you're back because you are doing something today that your future self will thank. Episode 12, this is Writing with Deb class 12. This is 12, 12, 12. I'm not anti-social media, like chances are you found me via social media. A lot of people are really anti, thinks that everybody should be sitting in the corner playing violin and learning Latin and, you know, doing decoupage. I'm a big fan of social media. I love it. I spend a lot of time there. And I do what I've always done because human nature doesn't change, but technology does. So I have always been somebody who loved to write things, get responses to things, find out about things, share information, songs, recipes, all of these kind of things. So the fact that you're here means that you're doing a lot of things in your day and some things you would call wasting time, some things you would call doing nothing. I don't think anything is a waste of time. I think that like writing, writing is never wasted because it either become something that you get published, you get paid for, you are proud of, it um, helps you become a better writer, or it becomes the compost that allows that thing to grow. So when you're doing nothing or wasting your time, often you're kind of recharging or just learning in the back of your head in your subconscious what it is that you want to get your head around. So. Here we are again, and it's great to see you. Can you see me? Can you see my earrings? Because if you look closely, you will see that they say smug cunt. They say smug cunt. They were made by a jewelry maker called Hannah. I'll link her in the comments. So this says smug cunt, and she. this is something that I call myself all the time, that I'm a smug cunt. So for the first 10 minutes today, I would like you to write about a fence. I'd like to write about something about a fence. What offends you, how you have been offended by others, what you do not find offensive, what you used to find offensive. See, offense isn't given, it's taken. And it's offense is about putting a line in the sand and wanting people not to say what they're saying and it's often not the fact that people it's not what they did or said that supposedly offends people it's the fact that they did it and they said it because people have a real problem with rule breakers and risk takers and usually almost always that's because they feel so contained and constrained themselves and they're trying to hold themselves in all of the time so they get really angry at seeing people flouting the rules so for the first 10 minutes today we are going to write about offense and people will often tell me that I offended them and I'm like hey I'm really powerful I'm really amazing but I just don't have the power to make you feel something. I wish I did, because I'd love for you to feel certain ways. And if it's a it's a Facebook post or something else, I've said, for as many people as they say, oh, I'm offended, and how can you say that? And that's outrageous, and you know, you're, you're being judgmental, and you've hurt my feelings. There are a hundred other people for everyone say, I agree, that's great. And there's another thousand who are just scrolling on by who do not give a shit. So, 10 minutes on a fence, starting now.
two minutes. Okay, fantastic, well done. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I've got some questions from some of our readers at home, watchers at home. Uh, if you would like to send me an email, I'd love you to send me an email. I'd love you to donate to my Patreon. I'd love you to send money, tell people, spread the word, whatever you like. Go to katherinedevney.com slash classes and you'll see the online class link. It's got all of the links going into uh, the series, Writing with Deb, and anything else I do online will probably be there as well. Uh, so here's a question from Kelly. Hey Deb, I'm so pissed off. My novel that I started after attending a masterclass in Adelaide. Now, okay, so I run these masterclasses called Gunners Writing Masterclasses. I run the writing ones, but I get different people in to do journalism, self-publishing, comedy, memoir, and I run retreats, Gunners Writing Retreats here in Victoria, down near Apollo Bay that are amazing. So that's what she's talking about. I go to places like Adelaide, Perth, Sydney, Canberra, wherever. So if you are in Australia and you'd like to come to one of my masterclasses, hop on uh, the classes page, message me, get on my mail, mailing list and you'll find out. So uh, Kelly started uh, a novel after her coming to a masterclass in Adelaide, beautiful Adelaide. And it was a novel about a virus that passed from animal to human in China and a bunch of smart chick epidemiologists who saved the fucking day. No jokes, Dev. Should I bin it? Got any post-pandemic insights for appetites of novels that isn't fiction anymore? Well, it is. It is. I get this all the time. I think, again, the... Obstacles that we put in front of our own writing always sound really obstacle. Oh, re re sorry. Always sound really earnest. Always sound really earnest. Now, I know I could go back and edit that. I'm not going to because I want you to understand that perfect is the enemy of good and never to compare someone's front of house with your back of house. That's why I do very few edits on this video because I just want you to see what it's actually like. If I could, I would turn the laptop around and show you the rest of the bedroom with piles of boxes of the shit that's normally around here. So Kelly, no, it's not, it's still fiction. It hasn't happened. Don't let someone's done it before stop you writing your book. Every, or thoughts of it, that is just bullshit. Almost every book has been written before. Every single book I've written, somebody's gone, um, hasn't that been written before? The book that's probably the most successful of all the ones I've written called The Happiness Show, you can listen to it on Audible. Um, it's narrated by Mary Louise Walker and my gorgeous partner, Anthony, did the sound engineering and I love it, love, love, love it. Uh, 
people like it's the incredible true story of people who fancy themselves uh, fancied each other and themselves in their early 20s because you know what being in your early 20s is like and then they fancied each other in their 40s like how is that an original story yet i wrote it in 2002 2003 um i shopped around at the time no one wanted it my publishers black ink books they um found out about it accidentally long story that i don't have a time to tell if i ever see you in the street ask me to tell you the story and in two and they they ran it as in 2011, they said, we want to publish a novel. And I said, what novel? And they said, The Happiness Show. And I said, but you don't publish fiction. And they said, we do now. So it's probably somewhere up here. And um, there's just usual words. Oh, look, yeah, book on writing. Hasn't that been done before? No, look at that. Sold thousands. Love it. Helped meet millions of people. The Happiness Show. It's got a couple of different covers. Um, yeah, and so this was... Um, uh, this is probably my favourite book to write. You're not supposed to have favourites, but it really is. If you want to buy it, you can go on the links on Try Booking or have a look at the page and just um, send me a message and say, the book that I'm after is The Happiness Show. So, yeah, that's not, a, that's not an original story. What is an original story? I mean, people falling in love, people writing about books about writing. If you go to people, so as you know, my favourite genre, or genre, as the commercial television stations say, is memoir. If you go into people's bookshelves, they generally read the same book over and over again and they love it. They just like, if you're in, if someone is interested in reading something like that, like about pandemics and all that, that they probably, I guarantee you, they won't just read one fictional account of that. And anyway, Kelly, it's not even fucking written. Just get it done. It doesn't matter if anybody reads it. We write for the same reason that we exercise because it makes us feel better. Don't just abandon yourself going, oh, well, something in real life has kind of been a little bit similar to this book. No, it's not. And just be, these things happen, have happened all the time. My grandfather, my great-grandfather died of the Spanish flu and they will happen again. These are perennials. Just keep writing. Go into anybody's bookshelf and they'll probably, you'll go, ah. Oh, Sports biographies, that's basically the same story over and over again. Oh, a crime, historical, romance, tech, it's pretty much the same story. So, hug the fuck up, get over yourself, and keep writing. And speaking of hardening up and keeping writing, I know you guys, sorry, you people, love to uh, see a little bit of bling. Now, you know those negative voices that you hear when you write just exactly like that? Oh, I can't write this because it's been written before. I love these little, um, these little buttons I'm going to show you. So have a think of the things. What are the things that you say to yourself when you're unhappy writing? Like that you're going, oh, this sucks. Oh, I'm really terrible. Oh, I should be doing something else. Think about that, right? I'm going to show you this button, and this button can help you become metacognitive, which is thinking about your thinking, so that there is a there is a little spot between the stimulus and response, so you can action and you can do things a little bit differently and a little bit more the way that you'd like to. Back in the 80s when everybody was giving up smoking, it's like, when cigarettes go up to $5 a pack, I'm giving up. Um, they'd say put a rubber band around your wrist, and every time you felt like having a cigarette, just kind of flick it because it will... Um, just set up a bad association. So this is me. So wake up in the morning and going, I should do get back to that writing. It's like, oh, just check Facebook. No. Oh, I'll just, just go and walk the dog. No, no, no. Oh, oh, hang on. I've just got to go and clean that. For the last time, no. You know what I should do? I should read that. No. I need to clean that. No. I need to walk them. No. I really should. Before I do my writing, I should. N-O. These are really, I know it says on, no. I know, that's it. I, no, you can get them no, online. No. Just look for no button. If you're here in Australia, you can get them at Officeworks. Really helpful to just be your accountability person. Another thing's really good is, so say you're sitting there and you're fucking around on porn, Pinterest, pets, whatever it is that you like to do on Facebook. I like to do all three at once. So imagine you're just there and you're, you know, you're fucking around, you're going, oh, I'm going to do my writing. You can, and you're kind of, you're, you're a bit bogged, you're kind of a bit dragged into this kind of interesting distraction that you're doing. What you can do is you can give yourself a countdown. You can go, okay, in five, I'm going to get up 
and I'm going to go to my desk and write, or in five, I'm going to start on the document, and you just go five, four, three, two, one, now. So of course, there is a yes button too. So how do you feel when you're actually writing? How do you feel when you're doing it? How do you feel like this morning I went for a run for the second time in months. I've been going to the gym, but the gym is currently unavailable. So go to run and I like, I got out there and I had my headphones in and I started, I went, oh, this is so great. And I'm just saying stuff like this. I'm just, I'm actually, I'm running. I'm listening to too many dicks on the dance floor. And this is what I'm hearing in my head. Is that how you feel when you actually start writing, when you're actually doing it? Yes. So you sit there and you open the document or you open the notepad and you just go, no, I'm going to stay on par task. Yes, 100% yes. All right. A little bit of bling, a little bit of fun. All right, we're going to do a quick little prompt exercise before we finish up today. Um, and they're kind of visual prompts. So it'll go for about eight minutes, I think. Okay. Prompt number one, a piece of a jigsaw. Prompt number one, a piece of a jigsaw. Number two, a, a mug with a tea bag hanging out of it. Prompt number three, a ladybird. A ladybird, I think they're called cochineal in Italian because this is what cochineal or red flavouring or kind of red flavouring is made out of. So you can write anything about a ladybird and, a bird, and if you like, you can talk about them being these beautiful things being crushed up to make beautiful colours.
Prompt number three, I think. A house. A little house. I think it's prompt number four, that one, actually. Prompt number four is a house. A little house. Prompt number five, the number two. Last prompt, prompt number six. A palm tree. Terrific. Um, these are from Story Stackers, and uh, it's uh, that's a my little set. That bag says Sail the Seas. It's not a sea one. It's a, kind of a random one. So pick them up if they'd be fun at home to have. Uh, a last little question before we go. Um, I'm really enjoying the series so far. Uh, it's nice thinking about writing up because I'm a secondary English teacher and I really want to help my students find their feet in writing and, and be able to write for far greater good than just doing their doing well on their assessment. Hopefully they do that too. I love the way it's so on two, she's misspelt it, which I love because we know writing is not about spelling. It's about writing. I was, you know, growing up I was told you're never going to be a writer because you can't spell. It's like, but I don't want to be a speller. I want to be a writer. A lot of dis a lot of English teachers are dyslexic as well. It's really, really common to find dyslexic English teachers. Parents who don't understand often are quite thrown by that. But I am always delighted. My question is, what do you do when you what do you see as important for teachers to pass on to the young writers? What skills do you see as being most important? I used some of the activities from session one and two with them today, and they loved the three activities we did. They also found the down, up, and dental draft really really helpful and that was from Courtney number one that they, they need to know so I almost failed year 12 English I got 51% and I have been a professional writer for 25 years and I now run possibly the world's most successful writing um, class Gunners Writing Masterclass so they need to know that to, to, to have the delineation between assessment writing and just writing for expression and for love. Tell them that the things that kill writing is critique, criticism, having it in an educational or bureaucratic environment. So explain to them that you're teaching them how to pass this test and this exam, which means that you have to jump over certain hurdles and do things certain ways. But that's not writing because that's not how writing comes about. Writing is about stories and imagination and ideas and information and there shouldn't be, and there's no gatekeepers and there's no masters of the universe telling you what is right and what is wrong. So make sure that they know that just because they get a poor, a poor score because they didn't read the question properly or that they their grammar was poor or they don't understand essay 
form as well as other people do that their, their, their mark is no indicator on how good they are as a writer. All that shows is that you can listen to information, understand it, follow instruction and regurgitate when told. That's not writing. That's just basically being a robot. And that's what we need to do in our current assessment climates. So uh, if you can see people and if you can see young people who are great writers and got amazing imagination, just let them know that there's a lot of us out there who are professional writers who sucked in academic and school writing, absolutely sucked, failed, almost failed, didn't turn up, got thrown out. And we have gone on and thrived when we have no longer been told to lie down in a chalk outline that somebody else drew for us, that we can just draw our own, get our chalk and draw our own outline and our own mural whenever we like. They need to know being good at English does not mean that you're a good writer. There are many people who sucked at English and sucked at school writing who have gone along and had, like me, an amazing, amazing living out of being a writer and teaching writing and encouraging people to write. Because back in the early uh, start of this series, I explained that in my book, uh, Use Your Words, at the very beginning, there's a Toni Morrison a quote that sums up how I feel. Toni Morrison says that the purpose of freedom is to free other people. And as an English teacher, you can free those kids from the... Uh, assumptions that other people have that they may take on themselves about what makes their voices and their writing and their stories valid. Just say, this writing is one thing, your heart writing and your love writing and your creative writing and that kind of world of imagination, entertainment, education and information, that's a whole nother thing. So just encourage them and tell them, and, and also tell them that they'll come across people who will just criticise. You know, I just say, great people do things, mediocre people talk about doing things, and small people bag other people who are actually doing things. So thanks for joining me. Pull your finger out, get over yourself. Your excuses are bullshit. This was episode 12. We'll see you another time. Hope you're having a great day. See ya.